This hack came about because of a question from Don Harding, one of our weekend CNC warriors. He wanted a little more information about how to use the combined modes to build a better layout. So here we go. So this is what we're, what we're shooting for, is this um, graduation plaque. It actually uses three different projects. There's the scroll and the graduation cap from the uh, graduation day number one. There's the book from school days number one. And then there's this ribbon from the mother's garden number two. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file. And in this case, we're going to go to inches, and it's going to be uh, 12 inches wide by 12 and a half inches tall. And the thickness is going to be um, 1.125. And that's datums in the center, and that's great. So we're going to click OK. We're going to go over to our clip art tab, and we're going to scroll down to get the um, graduation Day number one, we're going to bring in the scroll, the diploma, excuse me, and we're going to bring in the graduation cap. And we're just going to bring in all of our, our all of our models, and then we're going to go ahead and do our layout. So now we're going to go to our school days number one, and we're going to grab the book. And then we're going to go to Mother's Garden number two, and we're going to grab the ribbon. So what we're going to do in the 2D view, we're going to scale everything up here to be approximately the right size that we want it to be. And why I chose to bring the, the scroll in first or the diploma in first is because it's at the back of my model. And not that it matters per se, but it just kind of helps me visually lay it out a little bit better. We're going to go ahead and we're going to bring our ribbon down to where it needs to be. Somewhere around this area here. And then we're going to scale it up. And then we're going to use our cursor keys and we're going to nudge it into place just approximately where we want it to be. And then we're going to go ahead and move our book down to where we need it to be. And a couple things we're going to think about with, with the book is one is we need to make sure there's enough room between the scroll here at the bottom of the diploma or the twisty bit and the bottom of the book. Um, if not, it's best that we bring it up and we actually set it into the scroll but I'm going to actually give it enough room there, I think. And then we're going to bring the hat, the graduation cap, up to where it needs to be. I'm just using the cursor keys to scroll it up. I can also grab the center and hold down the shift key and, and drag it straight up. And I would like to have the cap overlap this just by a little bit. So we're going to scale it up. And we're going to bring it down, maybe to there. And we're also going to scale down our book just a little bit. And I'm scaling down the book a little bit because I'd like to have the tassel of the uh, the uh, the hat, uh, the graduation cap, kind of come down in there nicely. Okay, so as a as a layout, that looks pretty decent. But we haven't done anything with the way these are being combined in together. Now this is VCarve Pro, so or VCarve Desktop. So when they when these models come in, they're already in there as merged. So every all of these models are merging into each other. And really what we want them to do is do a combination of that. So we're going to go back to our modeling tab, and we're going to look at our component tree here. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put our diploma at the bottom, which is already there, which is great. And then we're going to bring down our open book. And we're going to add the open book. Opposed to merging it into the diploma, we're going to add it. So we're going to right-click on that, go to our combine mode, and click Add. And you'll see what happened. So if we turn off the ribbon and the grad cap, you'll see that the book has been added to the top of the flat space of the di diploma, which is great. And then we're going to go ahead and look at our graduation cap, which merges into all of that, which is great. And then our ribbon again, which merges in. Now let's just go ahead and we're going to fiddle with this a little bit more. We know that we would like to use um, three quarters of an inch of our material for our model. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our diploma and we're going to click the, make sure it's selected and we're going to click the spanner. You'll notice that the wrench, you'll notice that we're in the 3D view, which is great. And we're going to scale this up to 0.75, oh, sorry, 0.75 to start. We're going to put the space bar and we're going to hit close. Now instantly, right off the bat, you're going to see a problem with that, is that this isn't thick enough at the back to, to, come, to, to make sure that we have the ribbon tucked in behind it. So we're going to have to do a little bit of fiddling around there. 
And the way to do that is to go back to our spanner and with the diploma is to add some base, base height and some track, some shape height. But the combination needs to have enough relief so that we can still see our, our diploma twisting at the top. So we're going to make this, I'm just throwing numbers out at this because we might want to change these later. There, so that might be a little bit, that might end up being a little bit too much. So we're going to go ahead and change this to 1.5. And so adding these up, we can add another 0.1 to this to give us the 0.75. And there we go. So I think that looks pretty good. The ribbon's tucked in there. Now, what we also want to do is we want to leave enough room so that we can, this the book fits underneath there. And right now it doesn't. Now also, if, you, if we move our model to the edge like this, we'd like to have all of the surfaces that we want to V-carve on, if possible, at just about the same height, and also at the maximum height of our model. So in this case, we want to bring up the ribbon also to be at the 0.75 mark. So we're going to just start off by just changing that to 0.75, and we're going to see what we get. And we want to make sure what I'm looking for is to make sure that the ribbon is playing nicely with the edge of our diploma. And you can see that it is. But what I want to do is I want to bring that down a bit. I want to make that 0.6 and I want to make this 0.15. And we're going to see what we get. Actually, I want to change that back to zero again. And I'm just going to check the heights of this. So I'm going to run my, my mouse across the top. And you'll see down here that the Z height will appear. And that's about 0.67. So this isn't a perfectly flat surface. And this here is about 0.68. So that's what we're going to shoot for is around another 0.1 on this. So we're going to add another 0.1 onto that. And that's going to be 0.7. And there we go. So that's great. So those are about even-ish, which is all we kind of want. And actually, I'm going to bring it down again to 0.68 just to make it a little bit shorter. Great, now I'm pretty happy with that. Now what I want to do is fit that book in there. And so what we're going to do is we're going to double click on the book. And now the book is being added to the to the already Z height of the diploma here. So if we, if we just roll our mouse over top of the diploma, you'll see again down here where my mouse is, that 0.18. So at least, so that's 0.18. So we have 1.18 on that already. And the maximum we want it to be is 0.75. So if, my train of thought is normally is that I need this to be the maximum thickness or the maximum shape height that I can have of this model is 0.75 minus this, which is, we'll say 0.2. So that's going to be 0.55. And we're going to, for the fun of it, we'll try 0.5 and we'll see what we get. And there we go. That looks pretty good, except for we've got a little problem here where our spine of our book is peeking out. So we need to change that to be like 0.45. And there we go, so that's all tucked in there now nicely. And now what we're gonna do is work with our cap. So let's close that down. And so the cap now, it can't be added because if we add it to our project, to our layout, then you'll see what happens. The hat, the tip of the hat wraps over top of our diploma and then also our tassel ends up looking kind of funny. So instead we do need to keep it to be a merged layer, but we need to add some back height to it. So we're going to go ahead, or base height, so we're going to go ahead and go to our spanner again when we have that selected, and we're going to add in that 0.18 as a back, and you'll see that now it brings it up nice and proud. And then what we want to do is we want to make it thick enough so we end up having the peak of this kind of peak out over top of that. So let's change our shape height to be maybe 0.45. It's getting there. As long as those two numbers don't add up to any more than 0.75, then we're pretty good. So we're going to make this 0.6. Ah, there we go. So it actually is going to be more than 0.75, so we can't have that to be 0.6. We're going to have to have it to be 0.5. Uh, and there we go. Okay, so there we go. So that to me is a pretty nice looking layout and everything is playing nicely with each other. The tassels moving in behind the book, the ribbon is over top of the book spine and everything looks great, perfect. So let's just take a quick look at our component tree. So we start off with, turn these all off. We're starting off with the diploma. And to the diploma, we're gonna add the book. And to that layout, we're gonna be merging in the graduation cap. And then to all of that, we're gonna be merging in 
the ribbon and that looks pretty keen but what now we need to do is we want to make sure that this all fits into that quarter inch or that three quarters inch of the wood that we want so we're going to click to scale our height and because I was paying attention to the numbers it does equal 0.75 but if it didn't I could click exact height and I could change this to be 0.75 and it would scale everything relative to all the, the, the components relative to each other so that it ends up scaling it properly but we haven't hit a bang on so that's great now what we're going to do is we're going to go and lay out lay in some text so let's just go ahead and we're going to zoom out in our 2d view then we're going to go to our drawing layer and we're going to go ahead and write in some text so we're going to first thing we're going to type in is going to be the date across the top so if we look at what we'd like to have we need the date across here graduation across the bottom and the, 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 the scholar's name across the, uh, the ribbon here. So let's start off with the top. I use the squiggly line 2015. And why I used the squiggly line there was mainly just to fill out the space. I don't want to stretch the 2015 out. I want to, and I just don't want the 2015 sitting in the middle. I want it to kind of fit across that. We're going to go bold and we're going to hit apply. And that looks great. So we're going to close this and we're just going to grab this and we're going to drop it up there on top of our scrolly bit there and we're going to nudge it down now one thing we are going to want to watch out for is this little top of our, our, our cap because we're going to be v carving this text if we happen to d dig down too deep with the, with our v carving we're going to end up the v carving bit is going to lob off the end of our of our hat which we don't want to have happen so we just need to be be, be aware of that that looks pretty good we're going to leave that there Let's do our next set of text, which is going to be graduation. And we're going to use the same squigglies. I'm not going to put a space, though, um, because um, that's going to take up too much room. Okay, and then we're going to do that. And we're going to click bold and apply. And then again, we're going to move it down to there. Okay, uh, close that down. And we're just going to make sure that it sets up there perfect. Now, we have a couple of little things we want to look at. Our, our, sometimes our font letter spacing isn't going to be good, and so we need to correct that. So let's just go ahead into um, this edit text spacing, and seeing as we have text selected, then we can actually position our cursor between letters. And if we click our left mouse button, it will take away some space. If we hold down the shift key and we click it, it will give us more space. So like here between the A and the, ta the, the tail there, we want to give a little bit of space. Between the T and the I, we like to give a little bit of space. And maybe we'll take away some space here and there as well. That looks good. And then we're going to go back to our pick tool. And we're going to go ahead and press T. And we're going to scale it down just a little bit. Just so it ends up fitting better in there. And that looks great. Perfect. And now we're going to put in the Emma Jones text in the center. So we're going to go ahead and type in Emma, E-M-M-A. Jones, J-O-N-E-S, bold, apply, and the first thing we're going to notice when we move it down to where it belongs is that the J sits below the baseline of the rest of our text. So we have a couple options. We can either make the J smaller or we can make the E bigger. And in this case, I'm going to choose to make the E bigger. So we're going to right click on that, ungroup it, we're going to go to convert to curves, and then we're going to go ahead and grab the E, press T, and we're going to stretch it down. Now we could scale it up. When we scale it up, then overall the letter gets bolder and bigger and doesn't look as good. So we're just going to go ahead and make that E bigger. We're going to close it. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to group that back up again by selecting all of those letters. Now we're going to make sure that the Emma Jones text is centered on this ribbon. So we're, first we're going to select the Emma Jones text, hold down the shift key, and then we're going to left click on the ribbon. We're going to go up to uh, Model, uh, sorry, Edit, Align, and we're going to align horizontally in there. So now it's centered up. And now we want to make the text kind of flow with this. So we're going to go ahead and go to the Distort tool. We're going to click that. We're going to use our bounding box, and we're going to click Apply. We're going to go ahead, and we're going to hover over top of this top line, and we're going to turn into a Bezier. We're going to turn the bottom one into a bezier, and we're just going to grab those two, those four control points, and we're just going to use our cursor keys and nudge them down. Then we're going to grab everybody, and we're going to nudge them up until we're kind of in in the center of our ribbon a bit. And we might want to just take these all four of those bottom ones and just kind of sneak it up a bit, just so it all fits a little bit better in there. And that looks pretty good to me. We're going to hit close, and we're good. 
And so that's our layout we're going to go with. So the next thing we're going to do is to develop some tooling. And to develop our tooling, we're going to go ahead and open up our toolpath tab. We're going to pin it in place. And the first thing we're going to do is create a roughing toolpath. So we're going to do a 3D roughing toolpath. And we are going to have to set up our material to start with. So this is great. We've got our material thickness that we set up originally. Our datum set into the center. We're going to put the gap below our model because that's the extra space that we want to have below our model. Oh, sorry, we got to position it properly. The white, the light space here is your model, and the dark orange is your actual, your extra material. And so we're putting our model at the top. That's where our position is going to be. And also our gap, our extra material is going to be at the bottom. So that'll give us a little extra backing. And we're going to click OK. And then we're going to go ahead and use our model boundary to do this. We're going to use a quarter inch end mill to do our roughing with. And we're going to use our, our model boundary, excuse me. Our allowance is going to be um, 0.04 of an inch, so that's going to, what's going to be left behind for material. And we're just going to go ahead and calculate that. We're going to split our view so we can see what's going on. So we're going to calculate that up quickly. And vCarfo Desktop is going to work some magic. And we're going to preview that toolpath. And that's what we should expect after we get to done our roughing, which looks good. Let's close that down. Our next path we're going to do is going to be our finishing pass. We're going to use a uh, 1 8 inch uh, ball nose to do that with. We're going to use our model boundary. We're going to offset it, the width of our cutter. And then we're going to go ahead and calculate that. And so off goes VCarve desktop. It's going to work some magic at the bottom. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to develop our tooling for our, our VCarving and then our cutout pass. Let's preview that. It should clean up quite nicely. And everything looks good. Remember, I wanted to get our cutter in between the bottom of the book and the, the scroll event, and it fits. It also fits nicely into there, and it looks pretty decent, so that's great. Let's close that down. And now we're going to go ahead and do our V-carving. So we're going to select all of our text, go to our V-carving tool. We're going to use our um, our 90-degree V-carving bit. And the big thing we're going to remember is to project that toolpath onto our 3D model. That has to happen because it needs to follow the contours of our layout. Let's calculate that. I'll just take a second to do that. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to preview that visible toolpath and that will be our V carving. Now what I might have wanted to do is go back and just correct that. I may have just snuck that text down a little bit lower. Um, it might have been a good good option but for now we'll leave it there. And now we're going to close that down. And now we're going to develop the tooling for the cutout pass. So in order to do that, we need to have a vector that outlines our whole model, our whole layout. So we're going to select any of our components that border makes up a portion of the total border of our um, layout. So we're going to select the ribbon and also the diploma in this case. I'm going to go to our modeling tab and we're going to click create vector boundary from selected component. And there we go. So we have this nice boundary now. And that's now our cutout pass is actually a profile cut. And so we're going to do our profile cut. So what we're going to do is our start depth of our profile cut is going to be at the top of our backing. So we're going to go down 0.75 to start. And then the balance that we want to go down is going to be 0.375. So those numbers together added up should equal the total thickness of our material, which in this case is 1.125. That looks great. What we should do is we should um, use um, some tabs to hold it in place so it doesn't rattle off your board or, or jump up and, and, and hurt your, your collet or your, your chuck or anything. Um, so, but we're not going to worry about that. We're going to leave our tabs off just because I wanted for presentation, I want to delete the extra material. And we're going to calculate that. And there we have it. So let's go ahead and preview that toolpath. And it cuts right through our board. And I can double click on this waste material. And there we have our finished plaque using three toolpaths, three projects, and some v carving. I hope that helps.